Hi folks, we're going to take a look today at asteroid 2011 AG5. Now, this is a potentially hazardous asteroid that NASA calculates has about a 1 in 500 chance of hitting us on February 5th, 2040. That puts it at the top of the Palermo scale and makes it the most serious threat that we currently know about. By comparison, asteroid Apophis, which you may have heard about, is ranked 8th. So this asteroid is something to definitely keep an eye on, and in fact, uh, an Apollo astronaut is currently petitioning NASA to try to get them to start planning a deflection mission in case it really does turn out that this asteroid is on a collision course. So we're going to look today at a couple of uncertainty plots of its orbit and see where it's likely to be on that date, February 5th, 2040. So what we're looking at right now is an amateur uh, uncertainty plot using purely amateur data. Uh, which covers about a three-week span of time shortly after it was discovered. Using that data, as you can see, what we can say for certain is what the shape of the orbit will be, but what we can't say for certain is where it will be along that orbit. So each of these blue dots represents a potential position of the asteroid, and it forms almost a complete circle with just a few gaps, and does form a higher concentration of blue dots closer to Earth than farther away from Earth, so it's more likely to be on the side of the Sun where the Earth is located. So we're going to zoom in here on Earth, and you'll have to bear with me, it's going to be fairly slow. We're rendering over 37,000 potential positions of the asteroid at this time, so uh, the computer is having to do a lot of work to do that. So you can see this line of blue dots near the Earth and the Moon. Uh, these are all potential positions of the asteroid, and we're going to move forward through time at a rate of one hour per step, and you'll see that one of these blue dots actually hits Earth. It's getting closer and closer, and at this frame we have contact between a blue dot and Earth, meaning a, an impact is actually possible. And then we're going to step it through one more frame, and you'll see this dot is deflected by the gravity of Earth. Now this, this program doesn't take into account the fact that Earth's surface is uh, solid. It will simply let objects pass right through each other. It's uh, not going to detect that and uh, do anything about it per se. It will simply calculate the gravity of these objects. So the gravity of the Earth, the gravity of the Moon, the gravity of all the planets are being accounted for in these uh, positions, but you have to look for yourself to see if an impact occurs. And we can see plainly uh, that it does. I'll zoom in more here to make it even more obvious. And then what I'll do is change the perspective to put the camera at the position of this uh, potentially uh, impacting asteroid, this uh, blue dot that represents a potential position of the asteroid where an impact actually does occur. Now because we only have uh, one detected impact here, we can say that uh, we're not sampling it enough uh, with 37,000 asteroids to uh, determine with any exact certainty what the uh, odds of an impact are from this data. But we can say it's somewhere in the ballpark of the 1 in 10,000s. Uh, 1 in 10,000, 30,000, 50,000, somewhere in that, in that order of magnitude anyway, is uh, the most likely uh, odds for impact based on this data alone. But this data only covers that three-week span of time after the asteroid was discovered, when it was still close to Earth. Um, right now we can't even see it because it's too close to the sun in the sky and it's too far away from us. It's about 140 meters wide, according to NASA, and uh, my analysis using just the amateur data uh, puts it around 170 meters, same general ballpark. That's enough to break through the, at the atmosphere and uh, cause some damage. So I'm going to change the position of the camera now. Um, this particular blue dot, 04483, is the one that uh, is a jackpot for an impact. So I'm going to change it to perspective, enable camera rotation and position. So bear with me a second. It's going to take it a moment to uh, change the camera's position.
Now, there we are. So this is putting the camera at the position position of the asteroid. I'm going to back it up here. So this is going to be a few hours before impact at midnight on February 5th, 2040. If you were an observer sitting on the asteroid looking at Earth, this is what you would see. Now with this program, it only updates the rotation of Earth once about every three hours or so. So there is the third hour and it jumps the rotation forward. One, two, and then three. So now it's updated the rotation again. It looks like, uh, according to this, it's going to hit the water somewhere probably off the coast of Africa. So it's probably going to rotate uh, a little bit more, and uh, it's so close in we can't even see at this point uh, where we're looking, but it's somewhere in the Atlantic. But again, that's just one potential uh, impact where the potential positions could be just about anywhere around the sun, according to the amateur data. So the odds of impact are very low, according to this data, but that's because we have a very high uncertainty of where it's going to be 28 years from now, based on only three weeks of data. We're going to have to wait a little while longer uh, before we can see the asteroid again, and then with amateur data, we'll be able to plot it with more certainty. Now, with the professional data, what they did was once they determined the uh, rough orbit, they went back in time, plotted it backwards, and looked to see uh, if any images that were taken before had the asteroid present in them. Uh, where it wasn't detected, we didn't recognize it as an asteroid, we didn't uh, detect it at that time, but uh, we can use that information for astrometric analysis nonetheless, and indeed they found that pan stars had taken a picture of it about a year before it was actually discovered. And so that expanded the arc of its known position to cover that year of time and nailed down the orbit much more exactly. So we're going to take a look at what that looks like now. So this is with all sources, both professional and amateur combined. And because we're much more certain of the orbit, as you can see, the blue dots form a much uh, smaller line near Earth. Earth is the little white dot amidst all the blue dots. We're going to zoom in on that. And because it's much more certain, we don't have to generate as many asteroids to get, in a, get a good idea of whether it's going to potentially hit us or not. So we'll step through again. This is also starting at midnight on February 5th in 2040. You see the blue line makes its procession towards Earth, and we get impacts. We get several asteroids hitting Earth in this case. So we know the odds are much better uh, according to the professional data than just one in uh, the 10,000s. It's, according to NASA, it's about one in 500. Uh, from this, I would guesstimate somewhere on the order of one in 1,000, uh, but obviously it could be a little better uh, if we sampled even more. So we're going to see here one of these asteroids. It looks like uh, 00935 is one of the ones that hits, so we'll put the camera at that position and take a look. So once again, I'll uh, put it in perspective mode. Okay, so backing up again, this is starting at midnight. And you're sitting on uh, asteroid uh, 00935, this is just an arbitrary number of uh, the number of iterations uh, performed with the Monte Carlo sampling. Uh, this observational Monte Carlo allows us to uh, get a, an uncertainty plot based on the, the astrometric data. Uh, and this is the 935th sampling. So you're sitting on this virtual asteroid where, the, uh, where it could be, and boom, we hit Earth. So this is what it looks like uh, when a, an impact is actually potentially possible. Uh, most times when I'm looking at, uh, at these asteroids with the astrometric data, uh, it's usually fear-mongering about an asteroid that actually isn't a real threat. But in this case, this is a real threat, and this is what a real threat looks like uh, when it's uh, potentially going to hit Earth. Again, the odds, even according to NASA, are 1 in 500, and by my estimation, 
it's somewhere around uh, one in a thousand probably and that's an, a, an approximate figure just based on the amount of sampling that I did uh, within Monte Carlo but the one thing I can say for certain is that it is a a uh, potential threat a little bit of weirdness there because I had to auto rotation enabled selected on that asteroid but you can see yeah these asteroids in three-dimensional space really are on the same plane as Earth and uh, really do pose an impact threat it's not below Earth it's not above Earth it's it's right about in line with Earth so it can actually hit us if it's there at the right time if it's in the right place at the right time an impact is possible however it's also possible that it'll miss us completely uh, in fact it's even possible it will miss us by a lot, a lot more than the Earth-Moon distance. So we just can't say for sure yet. We need more data, absolutely. But I do agree uh, with the astronaut that uh, says we should start planning a deflection mission, at least get it in the planning stages, think about what we would need to do to deflect this, because the more time we have to deflect it, the easier it will be. Uh, and one of the most likely deflection strategies is not the... Uh, Hollywood style Bruce Willis let's go in with a nuke and blow it up it's probably going to be something more like uh, a gravity tractor where you have precise control over the position of the asteroid and a gravity tractor is just a fancy way of saying put a really heavy spacecraft next to it at least as heavy as you can make it and keep it there for a while and the gravity of that uh, spacecraft will pull on the asteroid and eventually pull it off course and you can direct very specifically how you want it pulled off course and in what direction and to what extent uh, so for that, you basically need a spacecraft with ion engines, uh, so you have a lot of uh, a lot of efficiency uh, for your fuel, and have a lot of delta V uh, that you can ultimately exert. Because you want you don't need a whole lot of thrust, but you do need to keep from colliding with the asteroid. Uh, you want to keep basically at a constant distance from it uh, and a very close distance, so that you uh, exert uh, a pull on it and pull it off its course. So that's uh, one deflection strategy, which I believe the same astronaut is actually in favor of. Um, but we need to start thinking about uh, things like that, because not only is this asteroid a potential threat, but there's lots of potential threats out there. This just happens to be uh, one of the most likely and serious threats. But there will be threats in the future, even if this pans out to be nothing. Uh, so I think it behooves us to at least uh, think about how we would go about uh, deflecting such a thing. So there you have it, folks. This is what a uh, a real potential impact looks like. These asteroids here are getting deflected, uh, and that's because uh, they're passing beneath Earth's surface in the simulation and getting really close to the Earth's center of gravity, so they get yanked around a lot more than asteroids that uh, miss Earth. So there you have it. And... Uh, I'll uh, probably be making more videos about this asteroid in the future uh, when we get the chance to observe it again and uh, add more data in to refine our orbital determinations even better. Have a nice day.